when introducing the concept of a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, all of our initial examples used games with two players and a small number of actions. And in many contexts, this presentation style can make a lot of sense for learning. We can start with small examples to build intuition, and then think about how our solutions generalize when we scale up the problem. But unfortunately, in game theory, many of the approaches we study scale quite poorly, which means that small examples can often give us a very misleading impression. Many of the topics we'll study this semester relate to scaling up game theoretic analysis, and the challenges that arise are a big part of what makes algorithmic game theory exciting. But in this video, I want to show you an example where computing a Nash equilibrium numerically is impossible. So, what do I mean by that? Well, since computers generally store numbers using a floating point representation, if our problem has irrational numbers in its solution, we won't be able to compute them exactly. Now, there do exist computer algebra systems that can work with irrational numbers directly, but if we want to write algorithms that are efficient in practice, we'll need to use floating-point hardware, which cannot represent irrational numbers. And that brings us to this example of a three-player, two-action game, in which all of the payoffs are 0, 1, 2, or 3, and yet, the only Nash equilibrium of this game is a mixed strategy profile where the probabilities involve the square root of a prime number. This sort of result dates back to the original paper that John Nash published on equilibrium points. And it means that while I can tell you the equilibrium probabilities for player 1 are approximately 0.62 and 0.38, no matter how precisely I try to write these numbers down, this profile won't be an exact Nash equilibrium. So if we want to numerically compute Nash equilibria, what can we do? Well, now we know that whatever method we use, if it gives us back floating point probabilities, the answer we get may be only an approximation, which means we need some way to measure that approximation and say how close to a Nash equilibrium we got. Our first thought might be to measure how far off the equilibrium probabilities are, but that would require us to know the exact equilibrium, and if our approach to finding the equilibria is to run a numerical algorithm, we may not know this in general. So, instead of measuring how close our probabilities are to the equilibrium, we can think about, for the profile we have found, what are the incentives, and then measure how close this is to an equilibrium in terms of regret. We define regret for a player and a profile as the maximum amount they could gain by unilaterally deviating. To compute this, we need to find the player's expected utility when they play their part in the profile and compare it to their expected utility for each possible action, holding everybody else's strategies from the profile fixed. So let's try this out by calculating player 1's regret for this approximate equilibrium profile we'll need to find player 1's expected utility when they play either T or B, while the other players randomize according to the mixed strategy profile. And we'll compare each of those against player 1's expected utility when they also randomize. When player 1 plays action T, we know we're in the top row of our payoff matrix, and so the possible outcomes are these, and we can get the probability of each outcome by multiplying the respective probabilities of players 2 and 3. For example, the TLE outcome will happen with the probability that player 2 plays L 
times the probability that player 3 uses E. Since those probabilities are 0.48 and 0.38, that product tells us the chance we land here, and in that case, player 1 gets a utility of 3. The next outcome happens with probability 0.52 times 0.38, and in that case, player 1's payoff is 0. Then we have a probability 0.48 times 0.62 of ending up in this outcome, where player 1's payoff is 1, and a 0.52 times 0.62 probability of ending up in the last of these outcomes, where player 1's payoff is 0. And when we sum all this up, this is player 1's expected utility. When player 1 plays B, we'll use the same probabilities that we get from player 2 and 3's strategies, but those will now tell us the probabilities of each outcome in the bottom row, where player 1 respectively gets utility 0, 1, 0, or 2. And when we sum it all up, we get an expected utility for B that's close to, but not the same as, the expected utility for T. And this should make sense because we know that in the exact Nash equilibrium, the randomizations that players 2 and 3 are doing should make player 1 exactly indifferent between T and B. But in this profile, we have probabilities for players 2 and 3 that are not exactly the equilibrium probabilities, but they're close, and so we should expect that player 1 will be almost, but not exactly, indifferent between their actions. Now that we know the expected utility for both of player 1's actions, it's easy to calculate the expected utility for player 1 randomizing according to their mixed strategy, that will just be 0.62 times their expected utility when they play T, plus 0.38 times their expected utility when they play B. So we can fill that in here. And when we add it up, player 1's expected utility for the mixture falls between the utilities for the two actions. And so player 1's regret will be the difference between the utility of their best action and the utility of playing their part in the mixed strategy profile. Among their actions, T gives the best expected utility, so the utility of T minus the utility of the mix gives us the maximum gain player one could achieve by deviating away from their mixed strategy, so this value is player 1's regret. So in the exact Nash equilibrium, player 1 would have a regret of 0, because there's no way to gain by deviating. But here, player 1's regret is non-zero, but quite small. And so, while player 1 could do better than playing their part in this profile, they really can't do much better, and so their incentive to deviate away from our approximate equilibrium is very small. And thus, the idea of an Epsilon Nash equilibrium is, if all players have very small incentive to deviate away from some profile, then that profile is approximately a Nash equilibrium. So our goal now is to figure out, across all of the players, what is their regret for this profile, and the largest regret any of the players has will tell us the epsilon for which this profile is an epsilon equilibrium. If we perform the same expected utility calculations for each of player 2's actions, when player 2 chooses left, we will get a distribution over these four outcomes with probabilities determined from player 1's and player 3's strategies, where this outcome happens with probability 0.62 times 0.38, this outcome happens with probability 0.38 times 0.38, and so on.
and we'll multiply each of those probabilities by player 2's utility in that outcome, which are respectively 0, 1, 0, and 3. And when player 2 chooses right, we'll get a distribution over these four outcomes with the same probabilities. And so we can fill in utilities for player 2 of 2, 0, 1, and 0. And when we add up all these terms, we again get similar utilities for both actions, but in this case, right gives a slightly higher expected utility. Again, we can get player 2's utility for following the mixture by adding up 0.48 times the expected utility of left plus 0.52 times the expected utility of right. And then we can take a difference between the better expected payoff of either action and the expected payoff of the mixture to give us player 2's regret. And so player 2 has slightly higher regret, but overall still very little to be gained by deviating away from their mixed strategy. For player 3, when they play E, we get a distribution over these four profiles, and when they play W, we get a distribution over these four. And so we can fill in their payoffs to our expected utility calculations. And then the expected utilities for each action can go into our expected utility calculation for the mixed strategy. And then a difference between the better action and the mixture expectation gives us the regret. And now that we know the regret for each player when they all play according to this profile, we can say that this profile is an epsilon Nash equilibrium as long as epsilon is greater than or equal to the maximum over these regrets. But this approach of taking a maximum over the different players should ring some alarm bells because this is fundamentally a comparison between utility values for different individuals. And we know that utilities can be scaled by arbitrary positive affine transformations. And so, if I were to multiply all of player 1's payoffs by 1,000, the resulting matrix would still represent the same game, but now player 1's regret would be a factor of 1,000 larger. And so, when we think about the epsilon in an epsilon Nash equilibrium, we need to keep in mind that this depends on the scale of the payoffs for different players. And this concept of taking a max over the different players' regrets only makes sense if we are thinking about the players' utilities on roughly the same scale, and if we are choosing some epsilon threshold to say we have an approximate Nash equilibrium as long as the max regret is below that threshold, then we need to choose our threshold relative to the payoff scale of the game. But the upshot of all of this is that in general, when we are computing Nash equilibria, we will actually be computing epsilon Nash equilibria for sufficiently small epsilon, because we know that quite simple to write down payoff matrices can give us irrational equilibrium probabilities. So, if we want to design remotely practical algorithms for finding Nash equilibria, Epsilon Nash will just have to be good enough.